Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, America's number one podcast for new real estate investors, where we know that finding discounted property is the most proven path to financial freedom. I am your host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, and I am telling you this. If I could do it, so can you. So let's get started. I want to get I want to dive right into this conversation today. I want to dive right into this podcast because this one is absolutely gonna just like this is a fireball, a fireball going straight towards your brain because I've got a a, a professional, a real professional wholesaler, a real professional real estate investor out of Philadelphia, out of Bucks County. Uh, that is here to share his story on how in an era of a pandemic, he made $120,000 all, all by being proactive in his business. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, Marcus Freeman. Marcus, say hello to everybody. Hello, hello, everyone. This is for you. Brent, thank you for having me. It's a blessing. Appreciate you. It's a it's a blessing to have you on here because you have been quietly behind the scenes just doing deals, doing deals, doing deals. And you don't have you 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 didn't have a tremendous amount of experience. I mean, you started your business in 2019. It was kind of like a a sprint and stop, sprint and stop, and then you really got your momentum going in 2020. So first of all, Marcus, who are you? What is your background? Where did you grow up? Like how did you find this business? And, and then we'll get into how you're so successful. Yeah, so, you know, um, first things first, you know, first things first, to God be the glory, right? We're here. Um, all things that you want, you just ask for in prayer and believe it. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, originally, and uh, moved around a, a bunch. Uh, fast forward, I ended up in Philly um, with my now wife. We were dating, and she, she lived in the greater Philly area from Bucks County, so we ended up back at her hometown, uh, you know, her neck of the woods. So... You know, I ended up back in Philly, and um, I, I, I've always been in and out of real estate uh, and in and out of sales, uh, different roles. So, um, you know, and as far as like a licensed role, you know, so I was a licensed realtor for um, over over maybe 12, 13 years now. Um, you know, similar background to you, Brent, you know, similar story, you know, as, as far as coming up in real estate. Um, I started wholesaling. So I got licensed in Philadelphia and I started wholesaling just by way of someone asking me if I did it. And I'm like, I don't know what that is, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I looked into it and, um, you know, I, I YouTube university, everything, uh, fell into, um, Max Maxwell podcast, which, you know, led me into wholesaling Inc because he did an interview with wholesaling Inc, which led me into TTP and following you and, you know, so that's how I got familiar. You know, Sean Terry, everyone. Yeah, I, I reached out in, as far as like YouTube University, um, just to, you know, really took a deep dive into the business and what it was. So I started in ninth, in uh, 2019. Um, I made the decision to go full time wholesaling, um, even still as a licensed agent. Let me let me ask you this: How is your life different now that you are full time wholesaling as opposed to working as a real estate agent? So I feel like as a wholesaler, um, I really have my hands around the business. You know, I feel like I own the real estate business as a wholesaler. And you know this because you talk about this all the time. You know, you have your eyes and ears and feet on the ground and you are you're the one basically digging up deals. Right. So agents, you know, they find deals, they network. You know, the people, everyone knows an agent, right? We cold call, everyone tells you I have an agent, you know, and, and you know, so agents are kind of at a surface level, but I feel like when you're wholesaling, you're really getting down into the dirt, you're digging these deals up. Uh, so I really have, I feel like I have a sense of control of the business from a wholesaling standpoint. Well, I remember, I mean, I've been licensed since 04 and I, I just remember weekends and evenings and being at the whim of whatever my buyers and my sellers want to provide a really great service. I wanted to be there and accessible and communicate and do everything. But it was like, 
almost like you had anxiety because you never knew when you were going to get a text or a call or something that you needed to do sure. something or show a house or go on an appointment or dress up really nice. And I just knew I was like, man, there's got to be a better way. This There's got to be a better way to, to make income in real estate and have a freedom of schedule. And, and right. that's really what I found. Not only that, but I was averaging $7,500 a commission and now I'm averaging, you know, 28,500 a wholesale deal. So it's not even close. Um, and you get control of your schedule, which I thought was the biggest thing. So, um, so then when you're making that transition, and, and this is a question I often get from people that are real estate agents, and there's a lot of listeners and there's a lot of people that are watching this. Were you going in and giving multiple options to people say, hey, I can give you a cash offer uh, for your property and here's the number, or I can list the property for you? Yeah, so that that's one of the uh, benefits of being licensed is you do have the option. So and, and absolutely right. You know, so the way that I would frame it is, you know, from the first phone call, the initial phone call, you know, when they ask usually, how did you get my number? Right. <laughs> um, you know, I, I would say, well, full disclosure, you know, I am a licensed agent. You know, I'm not calling you as an agent. I'm not calling you for a listing. Uh, and then, you know, fast forward down down the line of the conversation. I would let them know, listen, if if I'm not your buyer, that's fine. I'll find your buyer, you know, and then they'll ask, well, how are you going to do that? Well, I'm just going to list the thing, you know, so worst case scenario as an agent, as a wholesaler who happens to be an agent, worst case scenario, I will get the listing. And can you clarify, because you're on the ground floor there um, in Philly, they are trying to make everybody that wholesales, you have to get a license. And we kind of talked right. about this off air. Can you give right. us a little bit, just you're in the thick of it. What is that? Where's the progress there? What's going on there? So I actually was part of a, um, a podcast. It was a seminar session, virtual seminar uh, a couple months back before the new year turned. Uh, with actually my title company, um, they they had an attorney from Philly who who discussed the whole thing. And basically, you know, the, the city of Philadelphia is a, is a huge market um, for investor activity. And so you have a lot of people who call themselves wholesalers, um, amateurs who are trying to get deals. You know, they're hungry for deals for fast money. And, um, you know, you can't knock the hustle in that regard. You know, but the city of Philadelphia, they, they want to crack down on people getting taken advantage of. So the, the way that they do that is by requiring that if you're going to do any business, any wholesale business um, in the city of Philadelphia, they want you to have a license. What that really just entails is you filling out some type of application, um, yes or no questions, and you get uh, some type of certification that says that you can do business in the city of Philadelphia. Um, haven't, haven't, um, I don't think that the, I don't think the infrastructure is there yet. You know, in terms of actually getting a license um, as we speak right now on uh, January 20th, Inauguration Day, unless it just got released. Um, but it's just something that you got to know if you're going to do any business in the city of Philadelphia, you're going to want to have a license. Um, there could be some some pretty uh, some some penalties if you don't. You know, and you get caught. well, and I think I think it's really interesting because what happens in other cities, other states, is they see what cities like Philadelphia do, and then they copy it, and then that's kind of the model that people work off of. So it's really interesting. Everybody in the country that is wholesaling or considering should be keeping an eye and just see what are the actual requirements in Philadelphia that they're making you do. Is it something where you have to get a full blown real estate license and go to the right. school and take the tests and do all that, or is it something? that's more like a certificate where you just have to kind of be registered so that they know that you're out there and you're doing things. So um, I thought that that's really interesting that it could just be a certificate or something, or, you know, or not a full blown license. From what I gather, it's a very simple process. And unless you have, you know, a conviction of fraudulent activity on your background, there shouldn't be a problem getting licensed in the city of Philadelphia as a wholesaler. Um, but like you're, you're absolutely right. Where, whatever market you're in, you know, if this is your business, you want to know your business. You want to know the stipulations. You want to know the regulations, if there are any. You want to know everything about your business inside and out. And that's 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 major. So we're going to go in a time machine right now. We're going back 13 years, okay? 
before you knew that real estate was going to be your your livelihood or your passion or your 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 business or your industry that you're going to go into what what made you what brought you into real estate there's so many other things i mean what i i always i ask this question a lot because i'm genuinely curious i just don't run across a lot of people that are that are like us you know what i mean like sure, you go sure. you go to if you you meet with your family you meet with your friends you see people on facebook and instagram they're not doing real estate why do we do it like why why did you do it you know what i mean yeah so this is this is a it's interesting that you asked that question because you know, when you listen to a lot of the podcasts, you know, I've, I've, you know, listened to a bunch of, you know, TTP podcasts, wholesaling inks, and, you know, that question comes up and, you know, even about books that you read and things like that. So my story, a lot of people I'm sure can relate to it. You know, I have an uncle who's um, a real estate investor in New York, you know, like I said, I grew up in Brooklyn. So I watched him, you know, buy his first property, you know, in, in Brooklyn and, you know, leverage that property to buy some more, buy some more, buy some more. And um, when I went to college, I went to college up in Connecticut. Um, he, uh, <laughs> I was 18 years old. He told me to read Rich Dad Poor Dad, right? So that's that's where it started, right? It started with Rich Dad Poor Dad, just like a lot of other people. Um, you know, read that book, learned about money, learned about assets versus liabilities, and I was always attracted to real estate because I saw what it provided for my uncle. Um, you know, so that's what made me jump into it. I jumped into it right after graduation of college, you know, 2005, 2006, and I've been in, in and out of it ever since, you know, we got hit with the bubble 2008 to 2010 sort of, you know, and, um, you know, so I got out of it, did a couple things, did some door to door, um, sales, you know, some door knocking and, um, you know, but real estate was always in that, in the background. So once, once I finally moved to Philly, um, after growing a, a, pretty decent size, uh, you know, door to door business. Um, I left that business, got back into real estate full time as an agent, and then got introduced to wholesaling, you know, and this is just the path, right? This is just the path, um, you know, and, and the trajectory, you know, that we're on right now. So where does this go? Uh, I mean, yeah. are you, are you going to be like, landlord of a thousand doors do you want to be a bank do you want to be a flipper and developer like what what's going on what gets you excited about the next level i mean obviously you're you, you've done 120k in wholesale deals by the way he did this all by picking up the phone and cold calling and being absolutely proactive marcus is not the type as you could tell by this interview uh this conversation that listen he's not going to just wait around for deals to fall into his lap he's going to go out and find those deals so you know, with that, there's so many, I, I look at this thing, Marcus, and I'm like, man, the sky's the limit, right? I mean, you can go so many different ways. What right now in the beginning of 2021 is sticking out to you as like what you want to do? What's the big vision? So really the big vision, um, and I love this conversation because this is for the people, right, Brent? So, you know, if we're talking big, you know, hairy, audacious goals, right? You, you, you know, the big vision is, over the next 18 months, um, you know, this is January 2021. Over the next 18 months, I'm going to grow my wholesaling business into an autonomous driving machine. Right. I love it. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's you know, so I'm, I'm ramping up now. You know, I'm, I'm hiring cold callers now, training them. You know, I'm going to be training some acquisition managers, recruiting for them, training some disposition managers over the next, you know, six to nine months. Um, over the next 18 months, this business is going to be on autopilot. And I'm going to leverage this business to do what you just said, actually, um, as, as far as being a property owner. Um, picture this, Grant. I am Grant. Grant Brent, I'm going to be. Because <laughs> no, no, listen to this. Listen to this. I am going to be the black, spiritual, philanthropic Grant Cardone. I love okay? it. Yep. So thousands of rental units across the country. Um, all in the area of reentry housing. All right. Reentry housing. You know, I, I feel that and, and my personal passion is um, being a part of fixing the rehabilitation process in our prison systems. Yep. So I'm going to do that by way of real estate and, um, you know, reentry housing for our, our ex convicts. I love it. I love it. That's absolutely. I, I actually, after we get off here, I've got a referral for you, but, um, that is sure. absolutely incredible. So, um, 
Autonomous, yeah. That, I mean, that's where it starts, right? Because you got to free up your schedule, right? To be able to go after those, uh, we, we it's called BHAGs, right? Big, hairy, audacious goals. Uh, you need to free up your schedule. And the, the way to do that is you've got to have a healthy bank account. And you have to have uh, that leadership skills that allows you to hire the right people to take over uh, the 17 steps it takes to hold to, uh, wholesale real estate. Right. Yeah. And so you start fitting people into those. And then all of a sudden, like me, um, my my passion was doing the coaching. I have a team that runs it and they we meet on Fridays for two hours, three hours. And that's that's where it's at. Like you were saying, it's on autopilot for me, for my business. And it's absolutely frees me up to be able to do that. So there is a path there and there is opportunity there, but you have to be able to get those deals going first. You have to be able to have that success. You have to have it not just, not just from a financial standpoint. And and, and I think you'll agree with this Marcus, but from a mental standpoint, you know what I mean? You have to know that you can do this. You got to know that you've got the systems. You got to know that you've got the right plan to be before you have, you know, the financial responsibility of other people in your hands. So I love it. I'm what I'm watching you over the next 18 months. That's going to be, that's going to be, uh, incredible. And I, and, and you're going to do it, but talk to me about 2019 because you had started where you just, was your schedule too packed with other things or were you doing too much traditional real estate or what, what, why didn't it get off the ground in 19? So, and, and again, this is something that a lot of people talk about. I think, you know, between you and, and, you know, the Todd Tobacks, you know, you guys have spoken about this a lot. Um, 2019, I made the decision to go full-time wholesaling. Okay. Um, and, and what that meant was, you know, I'm, I'm on the phone, you know, I, I did some door knocking. I started off doing some door knocking, but really hitting the phones, getting lead lists. And, you know, so imagine this, I'm sitting at my dining room table, right? I've got my laptop in front of me with all my leads. I've got my phone here. I'm hand dialing because I don't have an infrastructure in place yet. I don't have a mojo dialer or anything like that. You know, I'm hand dialing these leads one by one. I've got my tablet on this side. You know, I'm listening to audio books, you know, Grant Cardone, you know, 10X rule and be obsessed or be average. I got that thing just rolling. And then on my TV, I've got TTP, Wholesaling Inc., Sean Terry, all YouTube University in front of me. And I'm just going at it, going at it, calling, 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 hand down. You know, so I think what happened was, so the first half of 2019, ladies and gentlemen, everyone who's out there watching, I made zero dollars for the first half of 2019 as a full-time wholesaler, okay? And the reason why I'm telling you that like this is because there are people who are listening to this podcast, Brent, who are maybe feeling discouraged, right? They, they've decided to do this business, but they haven't gotten it off the ground yet. I did it for six months full-time with a wife, a child, one on the way. We just bought a house in 2018, and I'm going from January yeah. to June of 2019 on zero, mm. okay? So I got my, and, you know, I've been working, I've been working and, and, you know, you start to see progress. And I think Brent, you said it once in a podcast, uh, I think you did like a training of like 50, 50 uh, steps to success or something like that. One of the steps was, you know, you have to recognize every single little success, right? You know, so, you know, you recognize Stack all the, the small little, wins. Yep. Stack all wins, you know, so I'm getting, I'm getting people on the phone. That's a win. You know, I'm getting callbacks. That's a win. I, it just wasn't materializing into Revenue, right? Yep. So I, I got a deal on the contract that March. You know, fast forward, it didn't close until June, you know. Um, and, and, you know, so I got my first check. It was an $8,000 deal. It was my first deal. Had my LLC name on it. Picked it up from the title company. Came home. Showed my wife the check. I'm like, babe, this is it. Let's go. You know, it's go time now. You know, and, um, you know, so you, you, you it, it goes back to the, to the goal, right? To the dream, you know. What it, what is important to you, right? For me, it was being uh, a, a man, you know, and being a provider for my family and setting something up, not having to work for anyone, you know, being able to be home with my child, you know, I'm, I was home with my son every day, you know, while I'm hustling, he's watching me grind it out, you know, and um, you know, the, you the, you have to earn the freedom that you want, and that's what I was doing in the first half of 2019, just grinding and trying to earn. Um, the check started rolling in, you know, the second half of the year. And by October, November uh, of that year, I decided to reinvest into my business and join the TTP family. Um, it was right around Thanksgiving. 
And, um, you know, I, I got into the program, got into the training and, you know, this is this. So this is where it, it comes in where I've heard you guys say this before and you guys, meaning you Ty Toback, um, I've, I've heard you guys talk about this, you know, all the YouTube videos are out there. All the material is out there. Right. And you're, you're, you're taking a deep dive into it. But the fact of the matter is if you don't have this program, it, you're all over the place. And yeah. that's where I was the first half of 2019. So I got into the program and now now I have a structure to it. Now, I, now I'm able to systemize what TTP really is, the scripts, the next step, the next step after that, right? So by, you know, by the start of 2020 now, you know, now I'm getting a ball rolling, you know, and, um, you know, I'll, I'll be quite honest with you, the holidays hit, right? The holidays hit and 2019 holidays hit. So I wasn't really working, you know, I wasn't working. So by 2020, January, you know, I didn't make any money in January of 2020, Right. The summer hit. I didn't work in the summer, so I didn't make any money in August or September of last year. You know, but I still managed to make the results um, happen, you know, uh, as what you mentioned. But 2020, well, and yeah, good, good. No, finish your thought. 2021, what? I, no, I just, just, you know, 2019 was rough, you know, and you guys, you know, you're going to go through those rough patches, you know, start getting your business, getting anything off the ground. It's just going to be tough. You know, but um, if, if this is what you decide that you want to do, if you've made that decision, you don't turn away from that decision and decide to do something else. Because no matter what you decide to do, if you're going to do it for yourself and work for yourself, you're going to have that struggle regardless, getting it off the ground. So just go put your head down and go. And that is the difference between the people that make it and the people that don't. I am telling you, some of the absolute best superstars around the country, it took them six months to get their first deal. For real, six months. I always tell people, you need to expect 90 days before you get your first deal of really grinding and really grinding. And people are like, oh, no, 90 days. How am I supposed to last that long, right? Mentally, I can't do it. I need to switch it up. And I've got shiny object here and, and Bitcoin there and dropship and all these other things that, you know, are popping up at me. But if you stick to the plan, if you make the decision that you're going to make real estate investing your life and your lifestyle, stick it out. I am telling you, the reward is so much better than the risk that you're having over that really tough six months to essentially a year. And now you're off and you're running. And, and listen, you did some deals. You It was a proof of concept. You were getting it going. And um and and now now you're full go. I mean, you joined TTP, you got into it, and just went bananas. I want to put you on the spot, though. You ready? I want to put you on the spot. I want to read a text that you sent me because I think that it is um, it's really it's a really interesting text, and I want I want to see how you respond now. So you said to me, "Hey, Brent." Uh, Marcus Freeman here hit a mental roadblock prospecting probates from a moral standpoint. I know it can be lucrative and I have access to public records, but still conflicted. Any thoughts on overcoming it and going rhino on probate leads? So how do you feel now? I mean, because <laughs> I responded like, don't hallucinate. You're you're assuming, you know, you're making judgments that you know what's best for the seller without even talking to them. Um, but like, have you tried it? Have you got into it? Is, is that part of your business? Are you still feeling like, mm, you know what? I'm doing enough business on other lists. I don't, you know, I just still don't feel comfortable. So I have not actually started touching probates yet. Um, and, and, and in terms of the reinvented business, right? So 2020 business, I didn't do any probates. Um, that, that question, I remember that text that I sent you. Um, and you're absolutely right. So if you talk about what I, what I think about that now versus when I sent you that text, it's funny you mentioned that. I didn't know you were going to bring that up. Um, <laughs> so I was training my, uh, I was training my, my cold caller today and we're on Mojo and I told him, you know, he, he's leaving a message and he hit, he was getting ready to hit contact, right? He's screen sharing with me. So I'm seeing everything he's doing. He's getting ready to hit, you know, contact on it. And I said, you know, don't assume anything. Right. And I actually thought about that, that, that text that I sent you when I told him that don't assume anything. You don't know who the person is that you just left the message for. You don't know what their situation is. Right. So long story short, you're, you're absolutely right. You can't assume you know what you're in the business of. And if you are, if your mindset is, is how can I serve 
the person that I'm reaching out to, then nothing else matters, right? Because you're coming from a you're coming from a place of goodness. Like yep. You have to do something. You have to help people. The more and I had a, I had a when I did door to door sales, I had a coach, um, a manager who used to say it. You know, you're not where you want to be in life because you haven't helped enough people yet. That's it. All right. If you have a servant mentality and you go out there to serve people, good things will come back to you. You know, and and the same thing happens with probates. You know, somebody out there has a problem and they're in a probate situation and they need to get rid of a property. And when you cold call them, you'll find that out. But you can't assume anything. Perfectly said. I have nothing to add to that, and I add to everything. That was perfect. <laughs> what list? What list do you? What, what what list do you like? What do you like calling? And then yeah, let's break so, down a deal. Yeah. So, um, you know, as so as an agent, obviously, right? You have you have uh, access to the MLS. So what the way that I pull my list now is I pull all leads by zip code in the MLS that have had the most cash transactions. And um, you know, Philadelphia, like I said, is just a hot market. You can't really go wrong in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, but there are still certain zip codes that you want to do more business in, um, you know, than others. So it, it really is a by zip code uh, lead generation process that I use. Love it. And are you pulling what 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 is there signs of distress that you pull in those zip codes? Like you're not just pulling every house, right? Right. So what I'm pulling is, you know, I'll pull leads that are so I pull by zip code. I'll pull it by, um, you know, the, the length of time because I want equity, right? I want equity in the property. So I'm pulling it by the length of time of ownership. Um, 10 years? You know, last sales, sales transaction. I would say from seven from from seven years prior on back, right? As far back as you can go. You know, so I'm pulling out blocks of leads from seven years prior all the way back. Um, I started off doing, so last year I did a lot of non-owner occupant properties, um, that was my bread and butter last year. This year, I'm opening it up to everyone, um, you know, from seven years and back, you know. Um, so with that, it's just a lot of volume, just a lot more no's <laughs> that you got to filter through. Um, but there are there are some lucrative opportunities. I am getting some probates just by virtue of that. Right. They fall into the pool for pre foreclosures fall into that pool. You know, so I'm getting some of those, too. Um, but it's a pretty large pool. Um, but there's, there's, that, me, that just means there's a lot of leads to filter out and, um, a lot of business to get. I love it. So just, just to clarify for everybody listening, and by the way, if you want to put a face to this voice, uh, definitely check out Brent Daniels, real estate YouTube channel. And you can see this interview, uh, this conversation, the, uh, you had seven years. So basically what Marcus is saying is you want to look at when they bought it. So if it's 2021 right now, you want to, you want to go that they bought it before 2014. And the reason for that is there's been appreciation in Philly, right? right? And properties are worth more. So there's more equity and it's a short enough window to where hopefully they didn't suck out all their equity through some sort of home equity line. But you right. you, you deal with that sometimes. And he was going after non-owner occupied, basically rental properties. Were most of them vacant or were they occupied this year? Um, well, eh, maybe half and half. I, so it, Same it, with it, us. That's thing. Yeah, that's an interesting thing now, especially with COVID. Um, you know, so one of the questions that I would ask is my qualifiers, you know, as, aside from condition, timeline, motivation, and price, is, is this property occupied, um, you know, or is it vacant? You know, obviously, a lot of investors want vacant properties these days, especially. Um, and if, it's, if it is occupied, I would ask, can it be delivered vacant? Um, you know, and how much time would you need for that? You know, um, if a lot of, oftentimes, they're month to month leases, you have some long-term tenant situations, you know, so you usually the timeline is about 90 days um, or sooner, you know, but uh, yeah, that, that's, that's important whether or not it's, it's occupied at this point. Awesome. Uh, let's break down a deal. What do you got yeah, for let's me? Do it. Let's do it. So speaking in terms of um, occupied property, um, I know that that's something that we're going to be dealing with, you know, today's inauguration day. And, um, you know, with that, the moratorium for evictions is getting extended to March 30, uh, 31st or the end of March. Right. Um, and this is a real thing that we're dealing with in our business. So I want to talk about that. Um, the last two deals that I did, one actually just closed yesterday, um, but we'll, we'll talk about the one uh, before that. Um, it was uh, it was a very clean deal. It was a retired Philadelphia cop. Um, Cole called him, left him a voicemail. He actually called me back. 
um, just to see who I was and why I was calling them, you know, really, really cop minded <laughs> type of individual. Um, but, you know, hit the rapport, made, built the rapport with him, uh, found out that he wants to retire. Uh, he, he's actually a retired cop, but he wants to retire from being a landlord. You know, so he owns a few properties. And this this one in particular that I called him about, he was willing to sell um, the property. You know, he hadn't managed it. You know, so we knew in terms of condition um, that it was a pretty beat up property without even seeing it. Um, it was occupied. It was occupied for a long time. He had a long term 30 year tenant in there. Um, and, and that's a that's a very uh, colorful situation because they used to be best friends and they had a falling out since then. And they kind of hate each other and the tenant stopped paying rent. And, you know, these are the situations. This is a real situation for everyone out there. You're going to run into these situations and it's important. I'm only telling you this because these are the questions that you have to ask. This is the type of detail that you have to pull out of these people when you're talking about the situation with the property and with the tenant. All right. So long story short, we got the property under contract at a, at a fairly decent price, really good price, just because he wanted to get rid of the property. He wanted to get rid of the problem with the tenant. Um, he gave the tenant 15 days notice that this property was being sold. Uh, so I had the pleasure of actually going in after getting it under contract, going in and smoothing, you know, ironing things out with the tenant. Um, you know, this was my investor showing, my one-time investor showing. So I've got guys coming in and out of this place and, uh, you know, ironing things out with the tenant. I ended up, we, this, so this deal was, uh, it was a $17,000 deal. Okay. Um, it was a $17,000 assignment deal. Um, what that did for me, it gave me flexibility to offer cash for keys. Okay. So, you know, the, 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 my buyer wanted the property, all of my buyers, you know, I got multiple offers on this property is right in Philly, right off of 95, um, you know, hot location up and coming. And so I got multiple offers on the property. Um, you know, the highest offer won the property and he, he's a pretty good guy. You know, I could tell, you know, someone that I'm going to do future business with as far as the buyer goes, but either way, um, you know, he wanted the property vacant. So I offered the tenant cash for keys. You know, he, he wasn't working, so he's not generating an income. Um, you know, he, he, you know, he was going to live in his van, you know, he knew he was going to have to move, you know, but he also knew his rights as a tenant and as a squatter. Right. So what do you do? You know, um, he, you know, he knew that the property was going to be sold and that, you know, by the, at that time, by the end of the year, he was going to have to go anyway. This deal closed in November or right, at the end of November. So he knew he had about a month left, um, according to the previous moratorium. So what I did, I said, listen, you know, I'm going to be, you know, we're, we're going to need, you know, to take over this property. I'm going to offer you a couple thousand dollars, um, but I need this place vacated, you know, and I need it, you know, relatively emptied out. You know, whatever you can't get out, don't worry about it. But I just need it vacated. And and he was a little upset about it. But, you know, he went along with it because he needed the cash. You know, he had no other source of income, no other means to get, you know, two thousand dollars in his pocket. So, you know, the, the day um, the day before settlement went over there, met up with him. He and I went back inside. We did a quick walk through. Um, you know, we talked, you know, he, he's, uh, and this again, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you, you know, you want to come from a place of service, right? So this isn't, you know, I, I wanted to find out how I can help this guy. Um, and that's where it came down to, you know, so I gave him, you know, an envelope full of cash and, uh, he gave me the keys and, you know, I told him, Hey, listen, give me a call if you need anything. You know, I'm an agent. If you need a place, I will find you a place, you know? Uh, he's just like, ah, oh, you know, I'm going to be fine. You know, I'm going to stay in room on my, my, my buddy's couch and whatever, whatever. But, you know, so that was a cash for keys deal. Um, it works. Um, use it, you know, implement that into your, your strategy, especially now with the eviction moratorium. You can't evict. You know, that's the bottom line. You can't evict. Tenants know that, you know, they stop paying rent, a lot of them, you know, but and this is a pain point for the seller. Right. It's a pain point for the seller. And it's a, something that you can leverage knowing that you're generating revenue off of this deal, right? Offer up cash for keys and, and make that deal happen. Well, a couple of things, because I took a bunch of notes there, Marcus. So a couple yeah. of things that I noticed here is one, you made, and I'm going to ring the bell here in a second, but I want to finish this thought. You made the, your, the money on this by solving that problem of that landlord. Okay. One, right. they had a falling out. 
right? There are yeah. friends that are falling out, so they're not communicating, which happens all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. That's why we get so many good deals. Uh, two is he doesn't have a job. He doesn't have income, the tenant, and he knows his rights, right? So he, I mean, he yeah. could have planted there. I mean, he could have really planted there. It took you to go in there and to listen to him and see what he needed and ask the important question, how can I help you out here? Your landlord's going to sell this property. I want to make sure that you land on your feet and at least give enough, at least, I mean, you only had 15 days to figure this out, or at least that that's the notice that he gave him. So you're, you're, your back's against the wall anyway. Um, right. But at least you're communicating with them and you're helping him out and you're being there at as a human being, as somebody that is there to help serve them. And that is, that is why we get paid because guess who doesn't want to do that? The owner of the property, the owner of the property doesn't want to do that, but he also doesn't want to have the headache. So you solved all this. You made 17,000 and now you get a bell. Right yeah. It was, I mean, it was good. It was good. It was a good deal. Um, you know, but these are the things that we're going to have to be dealing with, right? You know, uh, with, with occupied properties. One, one question I have is, yes. What do you say? Because a lot of people watching and listening are like, oh my gosh, if I had to go and knock on the door or call a tenant of a property and it's like a weird situation, I wouldn't even know what to say to them. So give some advice to people and what they should say to somebody if it's a tenant occupied and it's kind of a you know, a rough situation. Yeah. So first thing I ask, so the way that I set this up, um, and, you know, I get this from from your training, uh, right, and, and from all the videos is, you know, I, I tell the seller, hey, listen, at some point, I really would like to get into the property. Um, I know that it's occupied. And, you know, obviously, with the times that we're in now with COVID, you know, we want to, we want to make it COVID safe. Um, but I really would like to get in there with, you know, some of my partners, and really just eyeball, you know, walk through a quick walkthrough. You know, how can we set that up? So we'll set, I'll set it up with the seller and I'll have the seller contact the tenant to let, to give them a heads up that I'm coming, All right? So the tenant always, you know, especially in a lot of these neighborhoods, you know, you don't want to just go knocking on people's doors saying, hey, you know, I'm coming to do a walkthrough. You got a mask on, so they don't even know who you are, right? Um, you know, so the seller will set that up. Um, by my request. And then, you know, by the time I get there, the tenant knows I'm coming, you know, I let the tenant know, Hey, I'm going to be in and out. I appreciate, thank you for letting me in your space. You know, I appreciate you letting me in. This will be a very quick walkthrough, you know, it might be up to 30 minutes or so. Um, you know, but we'll be in and out, you know, I'm going to take some photos. I'll have some people coming in and taking some photos and, uh, we'll be out of your way. And, you know, so while, so now while my, my cash buyers, you know, investor partners, financial partners, you know, whatever you refer to them as, as they're doing their walkthroughs, that's when I'm having the conversation with the tenant. And that's when I'm digging deeper with the tenant to find out what their situation is. You know, how long have they been there? Is it tumultuous? Are they working? Do they have options? What can I do for you? You know, it's really the bottom line of the conversation that I'm having with the tenant while my, while my investors are, are doing their walkthrough. I love it. And that's, I mean, if you boil it down, what can I do for you? That's it. What can I do for you to help you out in this situation? This is what's going on. What can I do for you? And then just let them talk. So, you know, go there with the servant mindset. That's what you want to do. Go there in service and you're going to win. So phenomenal. Marcus, uh, how do people get in touch with you? How do they find you? How do they reach out? They want to say that they love you. They want to partner with you. They want to sell you deals or help sell deals. How do they uh, get in touch with you? Yeah. Um, best way is probably by email. Um, I've actually, Brent, I've taken myself off the grid. <laughs> when I, I know you have. I know I'm you not have. Not anymore. I have an Instagram. I barely use it. Uh, so I couldn't even tell you where I'm, what, you know, how to at me, you know, on Instagram, you know, um, uh, I'll give you my email. It's, it's freemace, F-R-E-E-M-A-S-E dot C-O at gmail.com. It's probably the best way. I always get it on my phone or wherever I'm, you know, wherever I'm at, I'm always on my email. Um, yeah, shoot me an email. You know, you can tag, you know, TTP podcast, whatever on it. So I'll know where, where it's coming from. Um, but that will probably be the best way at this point, you know, to, to reach out to me. I love it. I love it. And listen, I mean, I see the vision. I see this next 18 months. I'm excited to watch the journey and I'm excited to see this, uh, re-entry housing dream come true. I think it's very much needed. And um, listen, 
I think you could do it. I think you could, you, you, you've got this. So I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited that you got to share that. I think a lot of people have got a ton of inspiration and hope and, uh, and confidence from listening to you and listening to your story about, you know, going through this and taking a year and then really taking off and having these big goals and going out and being proactive. So thank you for being on the podcast. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. So again, this is for the people, right, Brent? So, you know, when you're out there, if you if you haven't done a deal yet or if you've done a deal and it's a little bit of a lag time between the first and second or the next deal, um, there are three things that have helped me. It's, it's actually one thing, but it's an acronym, you know, because in sales, we love acronyms, right? TTP. Um, it's called SAW, S-A-W. And I learned this over a decade ago when I started doing door-to-door sales. Uh, S stands for system. All right. You have a system in place. You have TTP. You know, this is the track. You don't have to blaze a trail if you want to be successful in this business. Just figure out who's done it before, who's done it really well and follow the path that they've laid out. TTP lays that foundation. Okay. So system is S. You can also substitute the S for uh, the system for student mentality. Because even when you've got the system down, even, you know, sometimes we think we know it all. And that's when you hit a rut. That's when you hit a little funk in your business. You know, that's when it's time to unlearn what you thought you knew and go back to the basics with your student mentality. Go back to that system. All right. The A, attitude. Attitude. All right. We all know what a positive mental attitude is. Right. But let me describe what a positive mental attitude is because we all do the same business. When you're cold calling. And you get that guy on the phone and he's like, you know, and you're like, hey, I, you know, I just called to see if you'll consider an offer on your property there. And he's like, well, who told you to call me? Who are you? How'd you get my number? You know, who told you? Did you see a for sale sign on my property? If I wanted to sell, I'll list it with an agent. We've all talked to that guy before. Mm-hmm. Right. You talk to him. I talked thousands to him of times <laughs> all the time. Right. Bunch of times. Positive mental attitude is when that guy, because he's still on the phone, right? He still hasn't hung up on you yet. When he's still on the phone and you can say something to the effect of, hey, you know what? It sounds like you're not ready to sell yet. I can appreciate that. Thank you for your time. I wish you all the best, okay? And you know what that guy's going to say? Because he's still on the phone. He just reamed you out and tore you a new one, but he's still on the phone. You know what he's going to say back to you before he hangs up? Thank you. Yep. You too. You too, yeah. Yep. Right? That is a small win for your attitude. And that is that win that you can take to the next dial and the next dial and the next hot lead that's going to pop up because you manage that positive mental attitude. Love that it. attitude is going to take you a long way. And then the W is work ethic. All right. Work ethic. You just got to work. And we all, again, you know, work ethic speaks for itself. We all know how to do it. We all know what we need to do. But for whatever reason, sometimes we still don't do it. So for me, work ethic, especially now, is being able to get off the grid. That's why I cut off my Facebook. I don't want to catch myself during the day doing this, right? Work ethic to me is telling my close friends and family, hey, I love you. I can't hang out with you right now. I'm doing something, right? And they don't don't have to understand it. They don't have to understand it, but they will appreciate it because they appreciate the focus that you're putting into something that you're doing to better yourself, all right? Work ethic is... Short-term sacrifice leads to a lifetime of paradise, all right? System, attitude, work ethic, every single time. System, attitude, work ethic, every single time. I'm going to, I'm going to, yep. <laughs> I broke the bell. <laughs> that broke the bell. That broke the bell. Saw, so, baby, that is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, guys. You got to reach out to Marcus. Um, show him some love. Send him an email. He's off the grid. I'll get him back on the grid. Don't worry. But uh, he's off the grid. If you guys are interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing, like my man Marcus here, uh, it is the wholesale. It, it's the uh, TTP program at wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. That's wholesalinginc.com forward slash ttp check out the testimonials scroll and scroll and scroll if it feels good in your gut sign up for a call i look forward to working with you personally marcus absolutely incredible i love this podcast it was phenomenal thank you it took me a while to get you but i got you and it was so worth it so thank you so much and um i'm excited to see what happens in the future everybody out there as always i encourage you to talk to people love you till next time see ya